Hello everyone! Since we're all waiting so patiently for the next update for Stardew Valley, which has got to be out any day now, I thought it'd be fun to cover some of the best mods that currently exist for this game. Some of which that I've been using for so long that it was at a time that even George could still walk. You're 105 and he's still going strong. Now, in order to use all these mods, you need to install Smappy, which is actually very easy to do. I'll post a link in the description of a video that shows you how to do that, which is basically what started me on using mods. Very easy to do, very easy to install the mods after that. The first mod I want to look at is one that I've had since the day I got it. I don't think I've ever deleted it. I think it's been my longest running mod. I've had it continuously until now, and I will continue to have it. And that is the CJB Cheats menu. And this one does a lot of things. Once it's installed, very simply, you press P to open its menu, and it has a lot of different things to it. Obviously, you can do a lot of different things. It's very helpful for just making the game a little bit easier or quicker, especially once you've done everything like I have. So taking a look, you can change your player stats, infinite stamina, infinite health, if you just want to go screw around in the mine or do endless farming without having to worry about energy. Because once you've planted your field a million times, it's not very fun to run out of energy at that point. You already have done it all. You just want to play freely at that point. Same thing, increasing movement speed, one hit kill, max daily luck, just tweaks you can make to the game to make it a little more at the end. I've always thought of mods as adding something to the end game once you've already done it all in the vanilla version just to give you something a little more and this one's certainly no exception. You can change your farm to durable fences, instant build, auto feed, so you have to do less of the little tasks and can just enjoy your farm for what it is. You don't have to repeatedly do the small stuff anymore, you just build it and it's complete, no worries. Changing your skills around, that's not a big deal. If you don't want to continue fishing endlessly, increase your fishing skill, that's easy. It can change the weather, which isn't a big deal for most of you, but for people like me who make videos or want to manipulate things a certain way, it's kind of a handy little thing. Relationships as well. If you want to mess with people, make them love you, make them hate you, you can do that, give gifts anytime, no friendship decay. Again, small little things you can do at the end game that just make it a little less tedious for you. Warp locations is a big one. You can warp wherever you want, all over the place. You want to go to the new beach? You can do that. Simply click and you're there. Another really cool feature of this mod is the time. You can change the time, you can freeze the time. You want to go a million floors down in Skull Cavern? You can do that. I do this one all the time because if you're impatient and want to find people, you change the time to when their door is open, you warp to their front door. Let's go see Marnie. Hello Marnie, I just warped here. She's not even here, whatever. And lastly, you have some control over other things. You can choose how to open the menu. It's set to P, freeze time with T. Those are pretty standard. You can also grow trees and crops instantly, which is an interesting aspect to this. Like I said, if you're at the end of the game, you don't want to water things for 12, 13, 14 days. Grow them instantly just to see what they're like. Have fun with the game at that point. Like I said, this is more of a mod for the end game in my opinion. You can use it all the way through, but it will take a lot of fun out of the game. The things I use most with this, infinite stamina, infinite health, and that movement speed for when I want to get somewhere in a hurry, plus the warp locations and time. I do a lot of videos, so this mod helps a lot with making videos. The game is under my control, I can choose when people show up, what they do, when to find them. It's a lot faster that way for me. This mod is my favorite so far overall, I've had it since the very beginning like I said, and I'm going to continue to have it. Just makes those little things a lot easier. Next up is another mod that's cut from the same cloth, and that is the CJB Item Spawner. Once installed, press I to open the menu. This will give you any item in the game. You can either search for it down here, or you can find it amongst the list over here. Sometimes it's fun to go through the list to find items you didn't even know exist. Or ones that aren't regularly available in game, like some of the weapons. Abby's planchette. Maybe you want to stab someone with whatever that is. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but it might be a lot of fun. This mod I've had for almost as long as the CJB cheats menu and it's helpful for me, like I said, for making videos. If I want to do a field of iridium sprinklers now, I can just summon them into existence and put them there. I don't have to farm the items anymore like I used to, which would take endless hours of my time. This one's also hugely helpful for when your spouse decides to change your walls to pink and your floor to grey tiles for some reason. You can just summon the wallpaper back into existence that you want and then no more problem. Also, you can get the money you need to divorce that spouse shortly thereafter. Unfortunately, at that point, you're still going to have to try and remember what wallpaper and flooring you had before because once they're changed, it's actually pretty hard to remember. Again, I see the CJB item spawner as more of an endgame thing, but you could use it throughout if you want a little boost in the game or you just want to cheat right from the beginning. Maybe you want iridium sprinklers right away because you don't like watering things every day or at least an upgraded watering can. Whatever you want, you can have instantly. Scarecrows. 
Like I said, I like to do things the natural way in the game, actually farm everything first, but once you've done it so many times like I have, it's nice to just summon the items into existence whenever you want them. Whatever seeds you want, whatever sprinklers you want, weapons, armor, whatever, it's yours right away. This mod again, really easy, just drag and drop into your smappy folder, no problem, helps a lot. This one's also a lot of fun for coming up with some crazy ideas and being able to do them. Because normally, getting this many statues of endless fortune would be millions of gold. They're 1 million gold each, but now I can just bring them into existence and I can fill the whole town with them if I want to. Normally, under normal circumstances, that would take you many, many hours to do. Now it's instant, just for fun you can see the result. That's the kind of thing that I like to do. Next up is a mod that I actually started using fairly recently that I wish had been out from the very beginning because I probably would have had it from the very beginning. That one is a tractor mod and it acts just like a tractor, it makes all the farming work easier. The hoeing, the planting, the seeding, the watering, it can do it all and it makes it all a lot faster. And it's really one of the only mods that does that. So using the first two mods, let's see how that works. You get the tractor from Robin, so here we go. We can change the time to a time when she's open. She's open at 10, and then we can even warp there all the way to the carpenter shop, which is right here. And Robin will tell us what the tractor costs. Construct farm buildings, I think we find it to the left. So here's what we need, 150,000 gold, 20 iron bars, five iridium, five battery packs. Of course, we're gonna cheat to get those using the item spawner. So that took about five seconds as opposed to the hundreds of hours it would normally take. Now we have everything we need and I already had the gold because I've been cheating for a while so I'm filthy rich. Now we just gotta figure out where to build this thing. We're gonna throw it right there just because we can. And then it's a typical few days until this thing's done. Uh, it actually didn't have to be because I forgot about the instant build I have under CJB Cheats, which does instant build somewhere right here. I didn't have that selected, that's okay, I'll wait the three days, not a big deal, I'm just going to sleep through it anyway. Then we'll have our tractor. Three days later, and I really can't tell you how much I love this mod. This is one I really needed right from the beginning, like I was saying, so what you have is a tractor. Now how to use that? Simply select the tools you want to use and it acts like that tool for I believe 9 spaces. So all you gotta do is drive around, combine that with some coffee or use the CJB cheats menu to increase your speed and it makes doing the big crops that much easier. This mod really is pretty unique in a sense that it can do what most of the other mods don't. Even a CJB cheats menu which can do so many things doesn't really help you with doing planting a whole big field. You can instant grow stuff. You can instant water stuff, but it doesn't help you for the planting aspect. You've still got to bring the seeds into existence using the item spawner and then plant them by hand. That takes a long time, especially if you've got a full field or something even bigger. So that's exactly why this tractor is so handy. Simply hop on, select the tool you want. So we want to plant now, so I'm going to use the ancient seeds. All I got to do is drive around and it plants them. Like I said, if you increase the speed, it makes this a lot faster. Then you want to water, switch to your watering can, drive around. Instead of doing one space at a time or the 18 with the iridium hoe, this is a lot faster. If you want to do a mega crop, use the tractor. It is the fastest way to do it. It will even take care of the grass and other debris. You want to get rid of the grass, use the scythe, drive around. You want to get rid of a chicken, drive over it. I'm just kidding. Unfortunately, you can't get rid of the chickens yet. Unless you sell them. Select your pickaxe to destroy things in your field. It will not take care of sprinklers, but it will take care of paths. Scarecrows are also safe. And it will destroy your crops you just planted too, so when multiplayer comes out, keep in mind you can do this. If someone plants a crop, you just drive on through and destroy it. And then the fourth mod on the list is one that I've only very recently started playing with but really liking it so far, and it's quickly becoming a fan favorite, and that is the longevity mod. Which basically does exactly what it sounds like, it makes the game longer, which is great for those of you that have played as many hours as I have because there's more to do. So gonna see Pierre, as you can see we have more seeds. We have canary melons, violet seeds, pineapple seeds, cucumbers, rice, all sorts of new seeds and the prices actually fluctuate on this so you gotta be careful what day you buy and what day you sell. Because sometimes you won't make very much money at all, if any. We also have trees and things to produce even in winter, which is a nice change because before you couldn't really do anything in winter. It got kind of dry through the winter months. A lot of people would actually quit during winter. Now you can actually have some trees at least producing fruit and be paying attention to other things. And you also have other things to consider like bills at the end of the month. That way it makes the game a little harder. There's more to think about. You can't just simply plant crops and make money. You got to be careful of how much money you have at the end of the month. Because if you don't have enough, you will go into the negatives and won't be able to buy anything until you get back out of that hole you've dug. That's what all these new trees are. These are new trees from the longevity mod. Except for those over there, those are the boring vanilla trees. But I have trees that will produce all year round, even in winter. 
Longevity will also change the appearance of some of the characters and that actually changes with the seasons. You'll see some of the people dressed for winter in winter and also their dialogue will change along the way. You get some new dialogue to work with so that's always nice. It keeps the game feeling fresh. This longevity mod is actually a really cool way if you are just kind of tired of the vanilla game you just want to start again. Download the longevity mod, install it, start a new game. It adds whole different mechanics and more things to think about. Now that you have new crops, you can time things out differently, see how much money you can make, have things to do during winter. It's just a really great way to get more out of the game. Even though in an existing file like this one, I'm having fun with it. This is year 105 and I've made the game longer simply by installing this mod. It is slightly more involved than the other ones to install. You have to drop it into your mods folder and then also overwrite some of the other files, but that's actually pretty simple once you understand how to do it. If you're not an idiot like me, it's probably really easy. And the final mod we're going to look at today, which is one I still use a lot and I've really loved it since the first day, is a different kind of mod than the other ones again. That's why I use it in combination with the other one. You've probably seen some of the markers all around the screen like this here. I'm feeling lucky today, but not too lucky. This mod is the UI Info Suite, and it gives you information about pretty much anything you want it to. There's lots of the heads up markers like this one. It will tell you the luck for the day. If it's someone's birthday today, it will show you whose birthday it is. It basically tells you everything you want to know about anything. Simply by opening your menu, you can start to see the effect. It has a billboard right here, so you can look, see what's going on at the store. You can even accept the quest right from here. You don't have to walk there. It also shows you your calendar. It's got the UI info mod options right here, so you can turn on and off everything you want. Show your luck icon, show your experience bar, so it'll show you your experience for the skill you're using. Show experience gain, townspeople on map, so you can track where townspeople are. Heart fills, it has more accurate heart meters. Uh, if everyone wasn't max hearts, it could show them at six and a half hearts, quarter heart, third of a heart, whatever. You want to stalk the people, click them there, then you can open your map and you can see where Alex is. He's right there. We'll go smell his hair later though. It will also show you your crop and barrel times, how long is left on the crop, what it is exactly. It will show you how much they're worth. It'll show you if the traveling merchant is in town. This mod basically will tell you everything you want to know along the way. This mod is something I could use. That way I'm not sitting there thinking, what did I forget to do today? If it is something you need to do, it will tell you. Is there a recipe today? I don't know. Well, it'll tell you if there is. Do I need to go see the traveling merchant? Oh, she's here. It shows you everything. For example, here's a crop I just planted. Maybe I've waited a day and I can't remember what they are because I'm stupid. I simply hover over and they're ancient fruit and they've got 28 days left before they're going to produce me anything. But they're also not watered and there's no scarecrow around them to protect them from the crows. Well, luckily I have those items, but I don't know where to put them. So if I suck my iridium sprinkler, it also tells me how much it's worth in a single and what the stack is worth. They sell for a thousand gold, by the way. Don't sell them. And it shows you their range, so I know where to place these as efficiently as possible. Unfortunately, I planted these like an idiot, so they're not going to be very efficient. But if I put one here, and then one here, and then one here, it's all uh, very much watered. In fact, it even overlaps. That's not a big deal. But then also the scarecrows. You ever wondered how far a scarecrow reaches? That far. This mod shows you how far things reach, which is super handy because I never really know where to put scarecrows because I don't really know how far they reach. But I know if I put it there, it just waters to right here and the whole big area around it. No more guessing, no more counting, just put it down, it'll tell you. Again, like I said, it will tell you the prices of things. So once they're done, just like that, magic, we can pick them all. It tells you they're ready to harvest. The poor Junimos want to come in and harvest, but they're not allowed. They're caged in now. They're my slaves. So I hover over the item. It's worth 635 gold. The stack of them is worth 4,445. So in reality, this mod is simply an information mod. Tells you what you want to know. You could actually use it right from the beginning of a brand new game, and it's not even cheating. You just have the information more available to you. You don't have to bring up the wiki as much or do any research into things. It can just tell you everything you need to know along the way. That slime saying hi to Haley, but I don't know where Haley is. So anyways, those are the five mods that I'm liking the best so far these days. I'll continue to cover more mods along the way, but these five I very much like. They're very well done, very easy to install, blah blah blah. As you guys may have noticed, I'm also playing more games now. I've started a new series in Minecraft called Farming Valley. That is the Farming Valley mod for Minecraft. It basically brings aspects of Stardew Valley and Harvest Moon type stuff to Minecraft. So there I am building a town, building a farm, just like I did here. 
If you haven't seen that, jump over there, take a look. I'll put a link in the description. Let me know what you think. That's something I am enjoying doing, so I'm going to keep going with it. So if you guys can get some benefit out of that, might as well give it a try. If you don't like it, that's fine, but let me know what you think. I will keep going with Stardew Valley, however. I'm going to do that probably every three days, maybe every two, every four, something like what I'm doing right now. There's just not much left here to work with anymore. I'm covering mods, I'm doing whatever I can, but I just can't do videos every day. I just can't come up with ideas fast enough. So every three or four days, I'm going to be covering other games in between. So let me know what you think of this video. Let me know of whatever, blah, blah, blah. Thanks for watching.